Thanks, folks. As, as I mentioned before, you can load up the slides here by either the QR code or the short URL, which is wikidatacon, this is bit.ly, wikidatacon 19 glam strategies. And the slides are also on the program page on the wikidatacon uh, site. And then there's also an etherpad here that you can click on. So I'll be talking about a lot of things that you might have heard about at Wikimania if you were there, but we're going to go into a lot more implementation details because we're at wikidatacon. We can kind of dive deeper into the wikidata and technical aspects. Um, but uh, Richard and I, myself, we're working with the Met Museum right now and they're open access. If you didn't know about two plus years ago, entering into the third year, there's been an open access strategy at the Met where they're releasing their images under CC0 license and their metadata. And one of the things they brought us on to do is what things could we imagine doing with this open access content? So we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, in terms of the experiments that we've been running and we'd love to hear your feedback. So I hope to talk about 20 minutes and then hope to get into some conversation with you folks since we have a lot of knowledge in this room. This is the announcement and actually the one year anniversary where Catherine Maher was actually there at the Met to talk about that anniversary. Um, so one of the things that's challenging I think for a lot of folks is how do you explain Wikidata and this glam contribution strategy to Wikidata to C-level folks at an organization? We can talk about it with data scientists, Wikimedians, librarians, maybe curators. But when it comes to talking about this with the director of a museum or director of a library, what does it actually, uh, how does it resonate with them? So one way that we've actually talked about that I think makes sense is everyone knows about Wikipedia and for the English language edition at least, we're talking about six million articles. And it sounds like a lot, but if you think about it, Wikipedia is not really the sum of all human knowledge. It's the sum of all reliably sourced mostly Western knowledge, right? And there's a lot of stuff out there. We have a lot of stuff in commons already, 56 million media files going up every single day. Um, but these are very, you know, a different type of standard to what goes in the Wikimedia commons. And the way that we have described Wikidata to GLAM professionals, and especially the C-levels, is that what if we could have a repository that has a notability bar that is not as high as Wikipedia, Right? So we want all these paintings, but not every painting necessarily needs an article. Um, Wikipedia is held back by the fact that you need to have language editions of Wikipedia. So can we store the famous thing, things, not strings? Right? Can we be object-oriented and not really lexical-oriented? And can we store this in a database that stores facts, figures, and relationships? And that's pretty much what Wikidata does. Right? And Wikidata is also a universal kind of crosswalk database to links to other collections out there. So we think this really resonates with folks when you're talking about what is the value of Wikidata compared to what they're normally familiar with, which is just Wikipedia. All right, so what are the benefits? You're interlinking your collections with others. So unfortunately, and I apologize to librarians here, I'll be talking mostly about museums, but a lot of this also is valid for libraries. Um, but you're basically connecting your collection with the global collection of linked open uh, data collections. Um, you can also receive an enriched and improved metadata back after contributing and linking your collections to the world. And there are some pretty neat interactive multimedia applications that you get, I don't want to say for free, but your collection in Wikidata allows you to visualize things that you've never seen before. Right? We'll show you some examples. Uh, so how do you convey this to GLAM professionals effectively? Well, I usually like to start with storytelling and not technical explanations. Okay, so if everyone here has a cell phone, especially if an iPhone, I want you to scan this QR code and bring up the URL that it comes up with. Or if you don't have a QR scanner, just type in w.wiki slash capital A-I-J in a web browser. So go ahead and scan that. And what comes up? Has everyone seen a knowledge graph pop up on your screen? So for folks here at Wikidatacon, this is probably not revolutionary for you. But what it does, it does a Sparkle query with these objects, and it shows the linkages between them, and you can actually drag them around the screen. You can actually click on nodes, if you're especially in a mobile, it'll expand that, and you can actually start to surf through Wikidata this way. So for Wikidata veterans, this is pretty cool, one, one shot, you get this. For a lot of folks who've never seen Wikidata before, this is a revolutionary moment for them, right? To actually hand manipulate a knowledge graph and to start surfing through Wikidata without having to know Sparkle, without having to know what a Q item is, without having to know what a property proposal is, they can suddenly start seeing connections in a way that's magical. Hey, I see Jakob's here. Jakob's been using some of this code as well. So this is some code that we'll talk about later on that allows you to create these visualizations in Wikidata. And we've really seen this turn a lot of heads who've really never gotten Wikidata before. But after seeing these 
interactive knowledge graphs, they get it. They understand the power of this. And especially with this example here, this was a really big eye-opener for the folks in the Met because this is the artifact that is the center of this graph right there, the portrait of Madame X, very famous uh, portrait. And they did not even know that this was the inspiration for the black dress that Rita Hayworth wore in the movie Gilda. So just by seeing this graph, they said, wait a minute, this is one of our most visited portraits. I didn't know that this was true. And there's actually two other books published about that, that painting. You can see all these things, not just within the realm of glam, but it extends to fashion, extends to literature, and you're starting to see the global connections that your artworks have or your collections have via Wikidata. So how do we do this? So if you can remember nothing else from this presentation, this one page <laughs> is your kind of one-stop shopping. Now, fortunately, you don't have to memorize all this. It's actually here, right here at Wikidata colon linked open data workflow. All right, so we'll be talking about some of these different phases of how you first kind of prepare, reconcile, and kind of examine what the Glam organization might have and what does Wikidata have, and then what are the tools to actually ingest and correct or enrich that once it's in Wikidata, and then what are some ways to reuse that content or to report and create new things out of it. All right, so this is kind of the, the simpler version of a chart that Sandra and the um, Glam folks at the foundation have created, but this is trying to sum up in one shot, because we know how hard things are to find in Wikidata, to find in one shot all the different tools you should pay attention to as a GLAM organization. All right, so just using the Met as an example, we kind of started with what is the ideal object that we have in Wikidata that comes from the Met. So this is a typical shot of a Wikidata item in the mobile mode there. And this is just one of the more famous paintings we used as a model here. We have the label, description, and aliases. And then we found out, you know, what are the core statements that we wanted? We wanted instance of, image, inception, collection, and then what are some other properties we would like if we had it? Depiction, information, material used, things like that. Okay, we actually do have an uh, identifier, the Met Object ID is P3634. So for some organizations, you might want to propose a property just to track your uh, items using an object ID. And then for the Met, just trying to circumscribe what objects do we want to upload and keep in Wikidata, the thing that we first identified were collection highlights. So this is like a hand-selected set of about 1,500 to 1,000 items that uh, we're going to be given priority to upload to Wikidata. So Richard and the crew out of Wikimedia in New York did a lot of this early work. And then now we're kind of systematically going through to make sure they're all complete. And then there's like a secondary set called the Heilbrunn Timeline of Art History, about 8,000 items that are, you know, seminal pieces of work, uh, art, artists' works uh, throughout history. And there are about 8,000 that the Met has identified, and we're also putting that on Wikidata as well, using a different destination here, described by source, Heilbrunn Timeline of Art History. So the collection highlight is no denoted here as collection, Metropolitan Museum of Art, subject has role, collection highlight. And then these 8,000 or so are like that in Wikidata. So, I couldn't show this chart at Wikimania because it's too complicated, but Wikidatacon, we can. So this is something that is really hard to answer sometimes. Like, what makes something in Wikidata from the Met or from the New York Public Library or from your organization? And the answer is not easy. It depends. It's complicated. It can be multi-factor, right? So you could say, well, if I had object ID in Wikidata, that isn't a Met object but maybe someone didn't enter that. Maybe they only put in collection met, which is P195, or they put in the accession number, and then they put collection as the qualifier to that accession number. So there's actually one, two, three different ways to try to find met objects, and probably the best way to do it is through a union like this. So you combine all three, and you come back, and you make a sortable list out of it. So unfortunately, there is no one clean query that will guarantee you all the Met objects, this is probably the best uh, approach for this. And for some institutions, you're probably doing something similar to that right now. All right, so example here is that what you see here manifests itself differently, uh, not differently, but as this in a query, which can get pretty complex. So if we're looking for all the collection highlights, we would break this out into the statement and then the qualifier as this, subject has role, collection highlights. So that's one way that we sort out some of these special designations in Wikidata. All right, so the summary is representing the Met is multifaceted, and you need to balance 
simplicity and findability. How many people here have heard of Sum of All Paintings as a project? Ooh, God, good, a lot of you. So it's probably one of the most active ones that deals with these issues. So we kind of always debate whether we should model things super accurately or should you model things so that they're findable, right? These are kind of at odds with each other, right? So we usually prefer findability, right? It's no good if it's perfectly modeled, but no one can ever find it because it's so strict in terms of how it's defined in Wikidata. Um, so mo and then we have some challenges. Multiple um, artifacts might be tied to one object ID, which might be different in Wikidata. Um, and then met, mapping the MET classification to instances can have some complex cases. So the way that the MET classifies things doesn't always fit with how Wikidata classifies things. So we'll show you some examples here of how this works. So this is a great example of using um, a Python library to actually ingest what we know from the MET and then try to sort out what they have. So this is just for textiles. You can see that they've got a lot of detail here in terms of woven textiles, laces, um, printed trimmings, velvets. We first looked into this in Wikidata, we did not have this level of detail in Wikidata. We still don't have all this resolved. Um, you can see that this is really complex here. Anonymous is just not anonymous for a lot of databases, right? There's a lot of qualifications, whether the nationality or the century. So trying to map all this to Wikidata can be complex as well. Okay, and then um, this shows you that of the, uh, all the works in the Met, about, what is it, 46% are open access right now. So we still have about just over 50% that are not CC0 yet. Quick question. Right. All the objects of the map or all objects on display? It's, it's weird. It's not on display, it's, but it's not all objects either. Um, it's about 400 to 500,000 objects in their database at this point. Yeah, so somewhere in between. All right, so starting points. This is always a hard one. We just had this um, discussion in the... Uh, on the Facebook group recently about like where do people go to find out where the modeling should look like for a certain thing. It's not easy. Um, so normally what we have to do is just point people to, I don't know, some project that does it well now, question mark. Uh, so it's not a satisfying answer, but we usually tell folks to start at things like visual arts or some of all paintings does it pretty well, or just go to the project chat to find out where some of these things are. We need better solutions for this. Uh, this is just a basic flow of what we're doing with the Met here. We're basically taking their CSV and their API, and we're kind of consuming it into a Python data frame. We're taking the Sparkle code, the one that you just saw before, the super union, bring that in, and then we're kind of doing a bi-directional diff, and then seeing like what new things have been added here, or what things have been subtracted there, and we're actually making those changes either through quick statements, or we're doing it through PYWikiBot, so directly editing Wikidata. All right, so this is the, the big slide. I also couldn't show it Wikimania because it would have flummoxed everyone. Um, so this is just a great example of how we start with the MET database. We have this crosswalk database, and then we generate the changes in Wikidata. Okay, so the way this works is this is an example of one record from the MET. This is an evening dress. We're working with the Costume Institute recently, the one that puts on the MET Gala. So we have one evening dress here by Valentina. Here's a date, accession number. So these things can be just put into Wikidata directly, right? A field equals the date, accession number. But what do we do with things like this? This is an object name, which is basically like a classification of what it is, like an instance of for the Met. And then the designer is Valentina. So what we do is we take these and we run this, all the unique object names and all the unique designers through OpenRefine. So we get like maybe 60% matches if we're lucky. We put that into a spreadsheet. Then we ask volunteers or the curators, the Met, to help fill in this crosswalk database. This is just simply Google Sheets. So we say, here are all the object names, the unique object names that match lexically exactly with what's in the Met database. And then you say, this maps to this QID. Right? So when we first started this, maybe like only about 80, well, 60% were filled. Some of these were blank. So we tap folks in specific groups. So there's like a Wiki Loves Fashion little chat group that we have. And like folks like user PKM were super useful in this area. So she spent a lot of time looking through this and saying, okay, evening suit is this, Ewer is that. So we looked through and made all these mappings here. And then what happens is now when we see this in the MET database, we look it up in the crosswalk database and we say, oh yeah, these are the two Q numbers we need to put into Wikidata. And then it generates the quick statement right there. Same thing here with designer Valentina. If Valentina matches here, then it gets generated with that quick statement right there. If Valentina does not exist, then we'll create it. You can see here, weeks, look at that high Q ID right there. We just created that recently because there was no entry before. Does that make sense to everyone? I'm sorry? Oh, the extra statement. So we have, 
Believe it or not, we have like evening blouse, evening dress, evening pants, evening ensemble, evening hat. If, do we want to make a new Wikidata item for evening pants, evening everything? So we said, no, we probably don't want to. We'll just say it's a dress, but it's also evening wear, which is what that is. So we're seeing an instance of both things. Yeah, I'm not sure it's the perfect solution, but it's a solution at this point. So does everyone get that? So this is kind of a crosswalk database that we maintain here. And the nice thing about it, it's just Google Sheets. So we can get people to help that don't need to know anything about this database, don't need to know about quick statements, don't need to know about queries. They just go in and fill in the queue number. Yeah? Well, it's through OpenRefine. So, yeah, so it does its best guess, and then we, we verify to make sure that the OpenRefine match makes sense. Yeah. Does that make sense to everyone? So some folks might be doing some variation on this, but I think the nice thing about this is that by using Google Sheets, we kind of remove a lot of the complexities of these two um, areas from this. And we'll show you some code that show, does this right later on. How do you generate How do you generate this? Uh, Python code. Yeah, I'll show you a line that does this. But you can also go up here. This is the whole Python program that does this, this, and that, if you want to take a look at that. Yep. Yes? Did you really use your own uh, vocabulary, or, or is there something uh, standardized hidden behind? You mean this right here? Yeah. yeah. So this is the Met's own vocabulary. So most museums use a system called TMS. It's like their own management system. So they'll usually, this is the museum world, they'll usually roll their own vocabulary for their own needs. Museums are very late to interoperable metadata. You know, librarians and archivists have this kind of as baked into them. Museums are like, eh, we, 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 our primary goal is to put objects on display, and if it plays well with other people, that's a side benefit, but it's not a primary thing that they do. So that's why it's complicated to work with museums. You need to map their vocabulary, which might be a mishmash of like famous vocabularies like Getty AAT and other things, but usually it's to serve their exact needs at their museum. And that's what's challenging. Yeah. And I see a lot of heads nodding, so you've probably seen this a lot at those museums. So let me move on to show you how this is actually done. Oh, go ahead, scan. How do you, I'm sorry? Ah, so for this, these type of projects, we just go to, for better or for worse, like Facebook chat groups that we know are active in these areas, like some of all paintings. Um, Wiki loves fashion, which is a group of maybe five or seven folks. Um, but we need a better way to get this out to folks so we get more collaborators on this. This doesn't scale well right now, but for small groups, it works pretty well. I'm open to ideas. Oh, yeah, please come, in, come on up. If folks want to come up here, there's a little more room in the aisle right here. Um, so we are us utilizing Python for this mostly. If you don't know, there is a Python notebook system that WMF Labs has. So you can actually go on there and just start playing with this. Um, so it's pretty easy to generate a lot of the stuff if you know some of the code that's there. Scan, yeah. No. Uh, oh, if you're using your own wiki base? Oh. Well, that's its own ball of, like, I don't want to maintain my own wiki base at this point. So, <laughs> yeah, if I can avoid doing the wiki base maintenance, I would not do it. So. Would you like we could. It's possible. Right. So I'd say solve it for 1,500, then scale up to 150,000. So but we're trying to solve it for the best well-known objects. And then... Right. Well, that's why we're going with the... With the 2,000 and 8,000. We're pretty confident these are highly notable objects that deserve to be in Wikidata. Beyond that, it's debatable. So that's why we're not vacuuming 400,000 things at one shot. We're starting with notable 2,000, notable 8,000. Then we'll talk after that. Right. So these are just the two lines of code that do the most stuff here. So even if you don't know Python, it's actually not that bad if you look at this. There's a read CSV function. You're taking the 
crosswalk URL, basically the URL of that Google spreadsheet. You're grabbing the spreadsheet that's called object name, and you're basically creating a data structure that has the object name and the QID. That's it. That's all you're doing. You're just pulling that in to the Python code. Then you're actually matching whatever the entity's name is and then looking up the QID. Okay? So this is just to tell you that's not super hard. The code is available right there if you want to look at it. But these two lines of code, which takes a little while when you're writing it from scratch to create these two lines of code, but once you have an example, it's pretty darn easy to plug in your own data set, your own crosswalk to generate the quick statements. So I've done a lot of the work already, and I invite you to steal the code and try it. All right, so when it comes to images, it's a little more challenging, right? So at this point, PattyPan is probably your best bet, right? PattyPan is a tool that is kind of a spreadsheet-oriented tool. You fill in the metadata, you point to the local, local file on your computer, and it uploads it to Commons with all that information. Or another alternative is if you set P4765 to a URL, because this is the Commons compatible image available at URL, Martin Dahmers has a bot, at least for paintings, that will just swoop through and say, oh, we don't have this image. Here's a commons, uh, a commons compatible one. Why don't I slurp it from that site and put it into Commons? And that's what his bot does. So you can actually take a look at his bot and modify it for your own purposes. But that is also another alternative that doesn't require you to kind of do some spreadsheet work there. Um, if you might have heard of GlamWiki Toolset, it's effectively end of life at this point. Um, it just hasn't been updated. And even the folks who have been working with it in the past have said Patty Pan is probably your best bet. Has anyone used GWT these days? A few of you, a little bit. Yeah, it's just not being further developed, and it's not compatible with a lot of our authentication protocols that we have now. OK, so right now we have basic metadata added to Wikidata with pretty good results from the Met. Um, and we have a Python script here to also analyze that. You're welcome to steal some of that code as well. So this is what we are showing to the Met folks now. We actually have um, list area lists that are running to show all the inventory and all the information that we have um, in Wikidata. And I'll show you very quickly about a project that we ran to show um, folks. So what are the benefits of adding your collections to Wikidata? Well, one is to use AI and the image classifier to actually help train a machine learning model with all the Met's images and keywords, and then let that be an engine for other folks to uh, recognize content. So this is a hackathon that we had with MIT and Microsoft last year. Um, the way this works is we have the paintings from the Met, and we have the keywords that they actually paid a crew for six months to work on to add hand keyword tags to all the um, artworks. We ingested that into an AI system right here. And then what we did was say, let's feed in new images that this AI ML system had never seen before and see what comes out. And the problem is that it comes out with pretty good results, but it's maybe only 60% accurate. And for most folks, 60% accurate is garbage. It's like, how do I get the 60% good out of this pile of stuff? The good news is that our community knows how to do that. We can actually feed this into a Wikidata game and get the good stuff out of that. And that's basically what we did. So this is the Wikidata game. You'll notice this is Magnus's interface right there, being played at the Met Museum in the lobby. We actually had folks at a cocktail party <laughs> drinking champagne and hitting buttons on the screen, <laughs> hopefully accurately. <laughs> So we had you know, journalists, curators. We had some board members from the Met there as well, right? And this is great. No login, whatever. We, we created an account just for this. Um, <laughs> so they just hit yes, no, yes, no. This is great. You, know, you saw this. You said, is there a tree in this picture? You don't have to train anyone on this. You just hit yes. You know, tr depicts a tree, not depicted. I even had my eight-year-old boys play this game you know, with a finger tap. And we also created a little tool that showed all the depictions going by so people could see them. Um, and it basically is like, you know, how do you sift good from bad? This is where the Wikimedia community comes in that no other entity could ever do, right? Um, so in that first like, few months that we had this, there were over 7,000 judgments, resulting in about 5,000 edits. Um, we did really well on tree, boat, flower, horse, things that are in landscape paintings. But when you go to things like gender determination and cats and dogs, ugh, not so good, I know. Because there's so many different types of cats and dogs in different positions, but horses, a lot easier than, than cats and dogs. Um, but also, I should note that Wikimedia Foundation is now looking into doing you know, image recognition on comments uploads to do these suggestions as well, which is an awesome uh, development. OK, so, so dashboards. Uh, let's just show you some of these dashboards. Folks you work with love dashboards. They just want to see stats. Um, so we have them, like Baglama. 
we have integrality. Is, anyone, is John Fred here? I think this is a new, very new thing relative to last Wikidatacon. We actually have a tool which will pr create this property completeness chart right here. So it's called integrality with two A's. It's on that big chart that I showed you before. And it can just auto-generate um, you know, how complete your items are at any set, which is really cool. So we can see that paintings are the, by far the highest, but we have sculptures, drawings, photographs. And then they also like to see like, what are the most popular artworks in the Wikisphere. So just looking at the site links in Wikidata, you can see and rank all these different um, artworks there. All right, also another thing they'd like to see is like, what are the most um, frequent creators of content and, or met artworks? Uh, what are the com most commonly depicted things? So these are very easy to generate in Sparkle. Um, you can look right there, using bubble graphs. Then place of birth of the most prominent artists. We have a chart there as well. All right, so structured data on commons. I just want to show you very briefly in case you can't get the Sandra session, but you definitely should go to Sandra section. You actually can search in commons for a specific Wikibase statement. I don't always remember the syntax, but you have to like <laughs> burn it in your brain and say it has WB statement colon P1343 equals whatever. So basically your last two parts of the triple, right? I always get has WB and WB has mixed up. I always get the colon and the equals mixed up. So just kind of do it once, remember it, and you'll get the hang of it, right? But simple searches are much faster than Sparkle queries. So if you could just look for one statement, boom, you'll get the results. So things like this. You can look for symbolically or semantically, you know, things that depict the Met Museum, for example. All right, so finally, community campaigns. Richard has been a pioneer in this area. So once you have the Wikidata items, they can actually assist in creating Wikipedia articles. So Richard, why don't you tell us a little bit about the mBabble tool that you created for this? Hi. Um, hello. Oh, use the Okay, I, I saw now. Okay, I'm good. Oh, yes. Um, so we have all this information on Wikidata. Um, lots of us like to browse Wikidata on our evenings and weekends to learn about art. Um, not everyone does. We have quite a, ah, thank you. We have quite a bit more people reading. Wikipedia, so how do we get this information from Wikidata to Wikipedia? Uh, one of the ways of doing this is this tool called mBabble, which developed with the help of a lot of people in uh, SOAP, people like uh, Martin and, and uh, others, and uh, to, so basically to take some basic art information and use it to populate a, a, a Wikipedia article. Um, so by who created this work, what was the artist, when was it created, um, etc. Um, and the nice thing about this is it can generate works. Uh, we started with English Wikipedia, but it's been developed um, in other languages. So Portuguese Wikipedia, the, our Brazilian friends who've done a lot of work and taken it to realms beyond art, to uh, stuff like elections and political work um, as well. And yeah, and, and the nice thing about this is we can, we can, we can query on Wikidata, um, so different, uh, uh, art, different art artists. Um, so for example, we've done projects with Women in Red, uh, looking at women artists, uh, projects related to uh, Wiki Loves Pride, looking at LGBT identified artists. Um, African diaspora artists and a lot of different groups and things of time periods, different collections, and also looking at just uh, articles that have been, have, been, have been and have been translated to different languages. So all of the uh, articles that have been translated to Arabic yet, and you can just find some interesting articles maybe that are relevant to a culture that haven't been translated into that language yet. We actually have a number of works in the Met collection that are in Wikipedias but aren't in English yet um, because it's a, it's a global collection. So there, yeah, there are a lot of ways and hopefully we can spread it around of, of of creating Wikipedia content as well that is driven by these Wikidata items and that also maybe can help spur the, spur the improvement of the Wikidata items as well in the future. And, and there's a number of folks here are using MBabble already, right? Who's using yeah. MBabble? Yeah. Oh. Brazilians? And also, if, if, uh, and we have, if Armin is uh, here, yeah, we have our winner of, <laughs> of the uh, Wikipedia Asia Month and, and, uh, and Wiki Loves Pride uh, contest. So thank you for joining <laughs> and thank, congratulations. Thank we'll have another Wiki, Loves, uh, Wiki Asia Month uh, campaign in November. It doesn't give you a blank page. It gives you the skeleton, which is really a much better user experience for editathons and beginners. Right? So it's a lot of great work that Richard has done, and people are building on it, which is, which is awesome. All right. Yeah, exactly. Right. And yeah, we should have put a URL here, but you, you. Oh, that's right. We have the link right here. So if you click, this is a Listeria list, and it's auto-generating all that for you. And then you click on the red link, it'll create the skeleton, which is pretty cool. All right, we're in the final stretch here. The um, tool that we're going to be announcing, well, we announced a few weeks ago, but only to a small set of folks, but we're kind of making a big splash here, is the 
depiction tool that we just created. So Wikipedia has shown that volunteers, co contributors can kind of add a lot of these uh, things that museums can't. So what if we created a tool that could let you enrich the wiki data, I mean, sorry, the metadata about artworks in the terms of the depiction information. And what we did was we applied for a grant from the Knight Foundation and we created this tool. And is Edward here? Edward is our wonderful developer who is like, in like a month said, okay, here's a prototype. Um, after we, we gave him a specification and it's, it's pretty cool. So what we can do, yeah, thanks Edward. Um, we're working within collections of items. So what we do is we can bring up a page like this. It's no longer looking at a Wikidata item with a tiny picture. If we're working with what's depicted in the image, we want the picture big. And we don't really have tools that work with big images. We have tools that deal with lexical and typing. So one of the big things that Edward did was made a big version of the picture, scrape whatever you can from the object page from the Glam organization, give you context. I can see dogs, children, wigwam. These are things that direct the user to add meaningful information. You have some Wikidata, I'm sorry, some metadata that's scraped from the site too. TP, Comanche. Oh, it's Comanche, not Navajo because I know the object page said that. And you can actually start typing in the field there. And the cool thing is that it gives you context. It doesn't just match anything with Wikidata. It first matches things that have already been used in other depiction statements. Very simple thing, but what a godsend it is for folks who've tried this in the past, right? Don't give me everything that matches TP. Show me what other um, paintings have used TP in the past, right? So it's interactive, context-driven, statistics-driven by showing you what is matched before. And the cool thing is, once you're done with that painting, you can start to work in other areas. Do you want to work with the same artist? The collection, location, um, other criteria here. And you can even browse through the collections of different organizations, just work on their paintings. So we wanted people to not live in Wikidata, kind of onesie twosies with items, but live in this space where you're looking at artworks in collections that make sense, right? And then you can actually look through it visually. It kind of looks like Krodos or these other tools, but you can actually live edit on Wikidata at the same time. So go ahead and try it out. We've only had 14 users, but we've had 2,100 paintings worked on with 5,000 plus to pick statements. That's pretty good for 14. So if we like, multiply that by 10, imagine how many more things we could do with that. So you can go ahead and go to art.wikidata.link and try out the tool. It uses OAuth authentication, and you're off to the races. And it should be very natural without any kind of training to add depiction statements to artworks. But you can put any object, right? We don't restrict the object right now, right? So you could put any Q number um, to edit this content if you want, but we primarily stick with paintings and 2D artworks right now. Okay, yes, and, and you can actually look at the recent changes and see who's made edits recently to that. Okay? Okay, so we're going to wind it down. Ooh, one minute, and then we'll do some um, Q&A. Okay, so the final thing that I think is useful for museum types especially is there's a very famous... Um, author named Nina Simon in the museum world, where she likes to talk about how do we go from users, or I guess your audience, contributing stuff to your collections, to collaborating around content, to actually being co-creative and creating new things, right? And that's always been tough, and I'd like to argue that Wikidata is this co-creative level, right? So that it's not just uploading a file to comments, which is contributing something. It's not just editing an article with someone else, which is collaborative. But we are now seeing these tools that lets you make timelines and graphs and bubble charts. And this is actually the co-creative part that's really interesting. And that's what Wikidata provides you. Because suddenly, it's not language dependent. It's, we've got this database that's got this rich information in it. So it's not just pictures, not just text, but it's all this rich multimedia that we have the opportunity to work on. So this is just another example um, of this connected graph that you can take a look at later on to show another example of you know, the death of Socrates and the different themes around that painting. Um, and it's really easy to make this graph yourself. So again, another scary graphic that only makes sense for Wikidata folks like you. You just give it a list of Wikidata items and it'll do the rest. That's it. You give it a list. Keep all this code the same. So fortunately, Martin and Lucas help do all this code here. Just give it a list of items and the magic will happen. Hopefully it won't blow up your computer because you're putting in like a reasonable number of items there. But as long as you have the screen space, it'll draw the graph, which is pretty darn cool. Right. And then finally, um, two tools. I, met, I realized at 2 a.m. last night, a few people said, I didn't know about these tools, and you should know about these tools. So one is Recoin, which shows you the relative completeness of an item compared to other items of the same instance. And then Cradle, which is a way to have a forms-based way to create content. So these are very useful for edit-a-thons, where if you know that you're working with just artworks, don't just let people create items with a blank screen. 
give them a form to fill out to start entering in information that's structured. Right? Okay, and then finally, we've gone through some of this already.、Um, this is my big chart that I'd love to get people's feedback on. How do we get people across the chasm to be in this space? We have a lot of folks who now can do template coding, spreadsheets, quick statements, Spunkle queries, and then we got a. How do we get people to this side where we have Python and the things that can do more sophisticated editing? It's really hard to get people across this. But I would like to say it's hard to get people across, but the content, the technology is not that hard. We actually need more people to learn about regular expressions. And once you get some kind of experience here, you'll find that this is a wonderful world that you can learn a lot in. But it does take some time to get across this chasm. Yes, James. Okay. No, what it means is that the graph is not necessarily accurate in terms of its data points. But what it means, it's, I guess it's more like this is a, a valley, right? It's like we need to get people across this valley here.、So. Um, I would say this is the key. Like, if we can get people who know this stuff but can grok this stuff, it gets them to this stuff. Does that make sense?、Yes. Yeah. So, my, 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 my vision for like, the next few years is that we can get better training in our community to get people from batch processing, which is pretty much what this is, to kind of, int- not gonna say intelligent, but more sophisticated programming. That would be a great thing. Because we're seeing this as a bottleneck to a lot of the stuff that I just showed you up there. Yes? Okay, wait. If you want to show me something, you show me after the session. Does that work? Okay. Yes, Megan.、Uh, microphone? Yes. Yeah. And we have lunch after this, so if you want to stay a little bit later, that's fine too.、So. Okay, we're ready to lunch break. Okay. So thank you so much to both you and Richard for all of the work that you're doing at the Met. And I know that you're very well supported at the Met. Right. Don't know what happened there. Yeah.、Um, for the average volunteer community, Right? How do you balance、um, doing the work for the cultural heritage organization versus training the professionals that are there、mm-hmm. um, to do that work? Like, where, where do you find the balance in terms of labor?、Um, that's a good question.、Uh, right now. And one that really comes up, I think, with this as well. With this? Yeah, and with various, building out where we put efforts in terms of building out competencies. Yeah. I don't have a great answer for you, but it's a great question.、Um, cool. There are, of, there are a lot of tech people at, at institutions who understand this side of the graph and don't understand it. There are a lot of tech people at institutions who understand this part of the graph and don't understand this part of the graph. So, if we, the more we can get Wikimedians who you know, understand some of this to, with some tech professionals at museums who understand this, then that you know, makes it a little bit easier. And hopefully, as, as, as well as training up Wikimedians, we can also you know, provide some guidance and let, them, let the museum eventually take care of themselves on this end. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. How many people here? Know what regular expressions are? Raise your hand. Okay, so you kn- how many people are comfortable specifying a regular expression? So, yeah, m- we need more work here. But <laughs> it's. I, I want to suggest that、um, f- maybe not getting every Wikidata practitioner or institution practitioner to embrace Python programming is the way, but、uh, as Richard just said, finding more bridging people,、right. people like you. Who speak both, right? <laughs> who speak Python, but also speak GLAM institution, right?、Uh, to help the GLAM's own technical department, which may not,、uh, you know, they know Python, they don't know、right. this stuff.、Uh, that's, I think, what's needed.、Uh, people like you, people like me, people who speak both of these、uh, jargons、uh, to help make the connections, to document the connections.、Uh, you're already doing this, of course, you're sharing your code, et cetera, you're doing tutorials, but we need more of this. Right. I'm not sure we need to make everyone programmers. We already have programmers. We need to make them understand the non programming、right. uh, material they need to. I think that's a great、with. point.、Yeah. We don't need to make everyone highly proficient in this, but we do need people knowledgeable to say that, yeah, we can ingest 400,000 rows and do something with it. Whereas if you're stuck on this side, you're like, 400,000 rows sounds really big and scary, but if you know that it's possible this, you're like, no problem. 400,000 is not a problem. I would just like to chime in a little bit in that, that there may be countries and areas where you will not find a glam with any uh, skilled uh, <laughs> <Right> . <laughs> technologists. So you will have to invent something there in the middle. Yeah. That's a good point.、Yeah. Any other questions? Sandra?
Yeah, I just wanted to add to this discussion. Actually, I've seen some very good cases where it, it indeed has been successful to train GLAM professionals to work with this entire environment and where they've done fantastic jobs, also at small institutions. Uh, it also requires that you have maybe chapters or volunteers that can train this, this stuff, right? right? So it's really like a bigger environment. Um, but I think that's a model that if we can manage to, you know, make that grow, it can scale very well, I think. Good point. Sorry, just noting that we don't have any structured trainings right now for that. We, we might want to develop those, and that, that would be helpful. I mean, right. we've been doing that for education in terms of teaching people Wikipedia and Wikidata. It's just a matter of taking it one step further. Right. Stacy. Well, I'd just like to say that a lot of professionals who work in this area of metadata and, and do work, like have all these skills already. So I think um, part of it is just proving the um, value to these organizations, but then it's also tapping into professional associations who can, or ways of collaborating within those professional communities to build this work and those, those docu the documentation on how to do things is really, really important because I'm not sure about the role of depending on volunteers when some of this work is actually work um, GLAM organizations do anyway. Like we manage our collections in a variety of ways through metadata and this is actually just one more way. So we, should we also not be thinking about ways to integrate this work into a GLAM professional's regular job? And then that way you're generating, when you think about sustainability and scalability, that's the real trick to making this sustainable and both uh, scalable, is that once this is the regular work of uh, GLAM folks, um, we're not worried as much about, about this part because it's just turning that little switch to get this to be part of, of that work. All right, point. Shani? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, but I want to echo what, what you said before. And yeah, Susanna, uh, this, is, this might work for more privileged countries where you know, they have money, they have people doing it. <laughs> it doesn't work for places that are still developing, that don't have resources, that you know, they don't have all of that. And they, barely, you know, they, they can barely do what they need to do. So it's difficult for them, and then the community is really helpful. Um, it, these are the cases where the community can have a huge impact actually working with the GLAMs um, because they, they can't do it all as part of their jobs. So we, right. we need to think about that as well. Yeah. But having these examples actually is hugely important because it's helping to still convince them that it's, it's critical to, to invest in it and to work with volunteers so with non-professionals of sorts, to, to get there. So. Right, right. I, I can imagine a future where you don't have to know all this code. These would just be the kind of like Lego bricks you can slap together, saying here's my database, here's the crosswalk, here's Wikidata, and just put it together, and you don't have to even code. You just have to make sure the databases are in the right place. Yep. Okay. Sorry. I think if I would have done this project, I would probably... Uh, done it in the same way, so I think that's maybe a good sign. I was wondering uh, how did the whole financing work of this project? How did the, I'm sorry? The, the, uh, yeah, the financing of this project work. The finance? Yeah, the money. Oh, um, that's a good question. Well, so <laughs> there are different parts of it. So the, the Knight Grant funded the Wiki Art Depiction Explorer, but I am, for the, for the last maybe, what, nine months, I've been their Wikimedia strategist. So I've been on since like February of this year. Um, so that's Pretty much they're paying for my time to help with their, not only the upload of the collections, but developing these tools as well. So, so. You yes. As a to be yeah, yeah, that's right. There was a grant for open access, um, and this is under that campaign and with the digital department. Um, so working as like contractors to, to promote the open access campaign for the Met. I guess before you were hired and before there was a grant, there was probably a lot of like volunteer work done there to was, make sure. Richard did a lot of work before that, um, and then Wikimedia New York did a lot of work, but it was kind of in, in bursts. It wasn't as comprehensive as we're talking about now in terms of having, you know, making sure those two layers are complete in Wikidata. Yeah. All right. Yep. I think that's it. So I'm happy to talk after lunch or after the break, if you want. So.
Okay, That's thank you.